Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unpacking the Ideneth Deepkin Warcry card pack. You can find all the fighter cards and abilities for the Ideneth Deepkin in the Warcry supplement book, The Sentinels of Order, but the card packs are certainly not all outdated and so it's definitely worth getting some if you like playing a particular warband and you don't want to use the book as you're playing the game. In the book you'll get an introduction to the Ideneth Deepkin and then you also get the abilities and the fighter cards for the 12 fighters that are available and sometimes these updated abilities can be a little bit different to the abilities in the card packs and also some of the fighter stats can be a little bit different. So in this video we'll unpack the card pack, go through all the cards, look at them individually, and also go through all their stats and abilities for the different fighters. And then I'll just check in the book to make sure that they're up to date and in line with everything you can find in that book. Okay, let's get these open then and see what's inside. And I've been waiting for these to come because this month's perk for my Patreon page is going to be the Ideneth Deepkin Warband, where we look at how to use the miniatures from Underworlds in Warcry. So this is good timing for a little bit of research. But here we go, let's get everything out of this pack. So that's all we're going to get there. Nice. And all together, we get these two duplicate cards. And then how many fighter cards are we going to get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fighter cards. And then we're going to get our fighter types and our abilities on this card and then that comes in all the different languages here nice selection but we don't need those so we put those to one side but already you'll notice that we've only got eight fighter cards but there's in fact 12 fighters in the book so straight away we're going to get a little bit of a difference but we'll cover that difference later on and we go as we go through it we'll see which ones are missing so in these cards we're going to get four regular fighters and four leader options now we can only take one leader and one other leader as a hero into our warband. So we could only really play two of these at any one time, um, but it does give us four options for four fighters. So it's not one of the biggest, widest ranges, especially for an Age of Sigmar warband. So, you know, there's no specific war cry set for the Ideneth Deacon. So you'd have to build that using existing Age of Sigmar sets and putting it together yourself. But this is a good place to start. And I like having the um, ability card to refer to as I'm playing the game rather than going in and out of the book and I also like to have the individual cards because then I can put the tokens on the card um, rather than having to come up with some other way or print off the the fighter cards from the book and then use it like that so it's really nice to have these but it'll be interesting to see if this is worth getting so hopefully this video will give you a good idea if this is something you'd like to add for your warband but let's read through one of the abilities first that every member of the warband is going to be able to use. And this is a double called Low Tide. And a fighter can use this ability only if it is the first battle round. And this fighter can make a bonus move action a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. So for this one, once you've gone past round one, that ability is out and you can't use it again in the game. And so for me, I don't really like this as the ability for all the members of the warband and you'll notice that there isn't another one that they can all use so this is the only ability that all the fighters can use so that's a real shame starting off but hopefully these others will make up for it and as we go through and look at the fighter cards um, we can see if the regular fighters are going to get to use some of these abilities because if they're only going to get this one then that's not very good at all and then you'd really be using the universal abilities more than the warband specific ones but there we go so that's the first one that's going to apply to all of them so we don't have to read it as we go through each card so now let's take a look at each individual fighter and then we'll go through their stats and look at the abilities that come with them let's start with the leaders and this is the lowest point leader that we can choose for our warband and this is the namati reaver icon bearer and he comes in at 135 points he's got movement six can take 16 wounds and toughness three He's got the leadership room mark, so he's going to get an ability that comes with that. And he's also got this other room mark here, the agile room mark, which is going to give him an ability from the fighter abilities. And he's got two weapon options. The first one is the range weapon, minimum three, maximum 15 inches. And he can make three attacks, strength three, dealing one to four on a crit. And if you get up close, he can also get out his blade. And then that's an in a range of one inch, making three attacks, strength four, dealing one to three on a crit. 
So for a leader, he's not standing out all that much to me from these stats, but let's see what those abilities are gonna to bring to the table. Right, so first up, we've got this double storm fire ability. And until the end of this fighter's activation, we add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that target an enemy fighter more than three inches away. Okay, so this is more like it. So we can get an extra attack in there. And as long as that fight is more than three inches away, so for our ranged weapon, that's perfect. And it's until the end of the activation, which means if we choose two attacks during that activation, then we can add one to our attacks characteristic for each of those attack actions. So that's gonna bring that to four. So then he can make four attacks, strength, trophy, three, dealing one to four on a crit. So that improves him a fair bit. Um, so that's pretty good, but he's also got this high tide ability, which is a triple, and that comes with him because he's a leader. And for this, a fighter can use this ability only if it is the third battle round. Add one, two of the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. Okay, so this is building into the whole idea of tide. So we've got the double low tide that every fighter can use with that rune mark, but now we've got the leader for the high tide. So you really wanna be going in and bunching a lot of your fighters together here, which could have some um, dodgy kind of effects from different tactics from your enemy though, if you do that. But if you wanna make use of this triple high tide, then again, it's only the third round though. So you really, are only gonna get one ability with your leader that you can only use in the third round. So these are really limited, and I don't think they're gonna do well. Looking at this so far, I don't think they'll do well against a lot of the other war bands we've looked at in detail like this. So it's a real shame that they're only limited to that. But again, we've got the book to use as well as the cards, so hopefully they've updated that and there'll be a little bit more that the uh, Ideneth Deepkin can use. But there we go, that's our first leader. Now let's take a look at the second one. Our next leader option is the Namati Thrall Icon Bearer. And it's a little bit more, 140 points. We've got that leader rune mark and another rune mark for an ability we haven't seen yet. We've got a movement five, can take 16 wounds and a toughness three. And with the weapon, it's a range of one, four attacks, strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. So we've already seen the ability for that leader one, but we'll take a look at the other fighter ability that we can use with this fighter. Uh, the, the damage output's pretty good, two to five for a 140 point fighter, and being able to make four attacks strength four is pretty good too. But they're not very tough, and not taking a huge amount of wounds for a leader. So uh, I think these two leader options are pretty weak starting off, so let's hope the other two are a little bit tougher. But let's have a look at the unique ability that this fighter can use. And this is a double called Sweeping Blow. Roll one dice for each visible enemy fighter within two inches of this fighter. On a five, allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. All right, so, you know, there's a what, one in three chance of inflicting some damage here and a one in six of that being the number of damage points equal to the value of the ability. So I don't think you can do a huge amount of damage with that, but useful if you can stay a little bit of, of range, but you've got to be within two inches. So you've got to get up close and the chances of doing some damage are, you know, one in three and you may only do like one point there. So not brilliant again. Oh, I don't know about this. This might be one of the worst war bands we've gone through yet, ability wise. Um, but let's keep going and see if it gets any better. Okay, our next fighter is coming in at 260 points. So we're really going up in points value now. And this is the Ishlein Lockean Prince. And with this, he can fly. He's got the leader ability rune mark and the bulwark rune mark as well. He's got a movement of 10, so that's much better. Can take 35 wounds, this is more like it. And he's got a toughness four. And for his weapon, it's a range one, making four attacks, strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. So this is a lot better. We've got a nice amount of movement and it can, can fly and can take 35 wounds. Toughness and strength of four is okay. And we can make four attacks too, dealing two to five on a crit. So this is a lot better. Uh, but let's have a look at the ability that's gonna come with the Bulwark rune mark. So here we go. This is a triple called Biovoltaic Barrier. Until the end of the battle round, count each critical hit from attack actions that target this fighter as a hit instead. Well, that's pretty nice. 
so we can limit those attacks coming there. So if you get this guy right into the thick of it amongst the enemy, even with 35 wounds, he's going to do quite well. But now if we can reduce those critical hits, then that's going to be really useful. So you can certainly start imagining you can push these in amongst a lot of fighters and then reduce those critical hits coming at him. So I like this. This is a really good one, much better now. Um, so there's other two, I would say, are not leader options, really. But this guy, for sure, is a great option for a leader. So now let's move on and look at our fourth and final leader option that we can choose. Right, we've got another Lockean Prince, but this time it's a Morsar Lockean Prince. And he's five points extra at 265 points. He's got a movement 10, same amount of wounds at 35, and the toughness is the same. He's got that leader room mark. He can also fly, but he's got the flame in skull room mark. So a different ability for this one. He's got the spear, so this is going to be a range of two, making three attacks, strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. So by having that extra inch of range, he does lose one of his attacks, and so we'll see if that's worth it. But for an extra five points, I imagine the ability's got to be a little bit better than the one we just saw. So let's take a look at that now. And here we go, this is our first quad that we're going to see, and this is the Biovoltaic Blast and we allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of this ability to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter. Now this is better, I really like this one. And um, this is again, you wanna get him in amongst as many of the enemy fighters as you can. Make sure he's within three inches of them, which he certainly will be once you start contending for objectives and things like that. And as long as those enemy fighters are visible, they're gonna just simply get the amount of damage points equal to the value of this ability. So this reminds me a little bit of the Shroud Queen from the Canite Shadow Stalkers. It's not quite as powerful though, um, but certainly if you're rolling fives or sixes and you can get within four of the enemy fighters even, you know, that's a lot of damage points being spread out. So you really wanna get these guys in as close as you can and dish out that damage. So I'm really happy that we've got this triple and quad that have made up for it. Another good option for a leader here, having that, two inch attack range is good because you can stay back a little bit and don't have to worry about disengaging so that's useful especially with that 10 inch movement and flight you can kind of get in and out really quickly and um, do some damage from a little bit of distance so a nice option there and that's our final option for a leader so now let's have a look at all the fighters okay, our first fighter is the namati reaver and so this is pretty much exactly the same as our leaders except um they're not leaders so the stats are going to be a little bit less so for 75 points we're still going to get that agile room mark we're going to get a movement of six which is really nice can take eight damage toughness three two weapon options first one range three to 15 two attacks strength three dealing one to three on a crit. And then with that blade, we've got another option for range one, three attack strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. So pretty good for 75 points. I really like that movement. Um, you're not gonna do an awful lot of damage with these, but we wanna be using that double storm fire ability that we saw earlier, which you can use, which is gonna give that extra one to the attacks characteristic. So taking that up to a three attack strength three, one to three is a lot better. And it's only a double, so you can certainly imagine using that quite a lot through the game and really improving this fighter. So although I wouldn't use the leader option of this one, I think for 75 points, this is a must have for the Warband. Our next fighter is the Namati Thrall, and this is 80 points, got a movement five, eight wounds, toughness three. We've got the room mark here for an ability we've already seen. And for the weapon, it's a range of one, four attacks, strength three, dealing two to four on a crit. So this is a nice option again. So these are a lot better than the leader varieties that you get for these fighters. So having that movement five is nice and being able to have four attacks dealing two to four on a crit is really good. But the strength three is just letting it down a little bit. But we do have that sweeping blow that we can use as well, which isn't the best ability, but we can start adding a few extra damage points there if we wanted to. But I could imagine using my doubles on that storm fire more than anything else. But there we go, so that's our second fighter, 80 points, not bad being able to do that, but the strength three is gonna make it pretty tricky to inflict that damage. And our next fighter is the Ishlane Guard at 195 points. He can fly and he's got that bulwark rune mark, movement 10, 25 wounds, toughness four, can make uh, four attacks from a range of one, and he's got strength of three, dealing two to four on a crit. So the movement and toughness, uh, sorry, the movement and the amount of wounds this guy could take are pretty good. I think that's really great. 195 points, you're expecting that to be pretty high, certainly for the wounds. 
Uh, four attacks is good, two to four, but again, the strength is going to let this one down quite a lot. We do have that triple biovoltaic barrier though, so we can use that um, to reduce the damage imposed on him. So it's a good option, but I think I'm going to prefer the next fighter, which is our final one from the pack. And here we are, here's our Morsar guard, and at 200 points, this is our highest point value fighter. We've got a movement 10, wounds 25, toughness 4 can fly and has the flame in skull room mark and just like the other one that we saw for the leader option it's the range of two three attacks the strength three and we can do two to four damage so yeah not ideal again that strength three that's going to make it difficult to do the damage and inflict it but we do have that biovoltaic blast so either including this option as a fighter i think's really got to be done if you go by all the cards and abilities in this pack or having him as a leader just to make use of this. In fact, if you had a couple of these, it might be quite useful, but you know, you're only gonna get one quad if you're lucky. So, you know, you only one quad, certainly not per round. I haven't seen that happen ever, I think. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna be able to use it an awful lot, but you could certainly have a few of them to give you options of where you place them on the board. And then also options of, you know, if you've got one with more enemy fighters in, three inches of them then that's where you'd want to use that quad but um yeah so definitely got to include one to be able to use that ability for sure okay so now i've got the book open and i'm just looking at the ability so all the eyes in the deep can fighter abilities that you can see in the book are exactly the same as the ones on here um, we've got this leader ability high tide which is included here as well and so they're the same so that's another triple ability as well so i would say all the abilities on this card have not been updated in here they're exactly the same all the stats and descriptions but you notice you do have four extra leader abilities and they're going to apply to different miniatures that you can use so let's have a look at those extra fighter cards because you notice there's what four separate abilities each with different rune marks but there's also four extra fighters so that just tells me there's going to be four extra leaders that we can choose for our warband so let's have a look at those now Okay, so we've got these four leaders here. We can have the Akalian King, the Isharan Tidecaster, the Isharan Soul Render, and the Isharan Soul Scryer. So those are our leaders. Now I have done a separate video on the deep dive video for the Ideneth Geepkin using all the abilities, fighter cards, and stats, and information from this book. So I'm not going to go over those again now, but if you want to see those in more detail with a read through of the abilities, then that's up on the channel as a separate video. But one thing I will say is that there's only 12 fighters available for Ideneth Deepkin, and you'll see here that eight of them are leader options. So you're only going to be ever able to play one leader and then one hero who's also got the leader icon. So that then only leaves you with these four fighter options. So I really think, for me, the Ideneth Deepkin aren't all that appealing, and I really do think they need an update. So this is a perfect warband for me to do as the Patreon perk this month. So now I've gone through the card pack and also done the deep dive previously. I've got a good idea of where I want to take this. So if you're already a Patreon, then that'll be coming out today. Um, but if you're not, then please check out the Patreon page and you can have a look at all the cool perks there. Join our awesome community where we hang out on Discord and talk about the hobby and share all our works and everything like that. So it'd be great to see you there. And I'll put a link in the description below. And that's an awesome way to support the channel if you'd like to. Although this isn't one of the best war bands and probably actually looking at it it might even be the worst one i'm still glad i got the card pack because there's certainly something we can do here using these fighters and these i wouldn't choose those as a leader so i'd certainly be looking to add one of the miniatures from the book and so it could just be a case of making one fighter card for that leader and then really go into town building your warband up with these fighters here I think if I was going to put together a warband with these, I'd probably be looking at some kind of maybe the starter set. Um, but I've got the Underworld set. I haven't painted these ones yet, but these can certainly be proxies for leaders. Really awesome models. They look really great. And then we've also got the crab and the fish. So the spine fin fish that we'd need to include as well. So when I do the the war band up for my Patreon members, I'll be including some fighter cards and abilities for these guys. And that's gonna make it really interesting. So we'll probably do away with this low tide thing maybe, or just include another double just to make it a little bit more interesting.
I'd love to hear what you think about the Ideneth Deepkin and does this low tide and high tide tactic bring anything to the game? Is it effective? And do you like them? Maybe you play them already. So yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, if you don't play them already, then what do you think about everything we've gone through here? Do you think it's worth getting the card pack or would you just use the book? So join in in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. If you would like to pick up the Warcry card pack or some Ideneth of Deepkin miniatures, then I'll put a link in the description below. I'll put a few links to some different places because these aren't always in stock. So you just got to see where you can get them. Um, but yeah, I'll put some links in the description. There'll be affiliate links. They won't cost you anything extra. In fact, with those links, you can save up to 20%, not just on the card packs, but on the Underworld set and any other miniatures and paint you buy as well. And if you buy anything through those links, then you'll also be supporting the channel because I get a small commission too, and that helps me to do loads more videos like this. So thanks for supporting the channel. It's really great and I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and this gave you a good idea of what you get in the card pack and also a look into the book as well. And don't forget, I've got that other video where I did a deep dive into the Ideneth Deepkin. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.